Mathias is in Rome to visit Princess Rita Boncompagni, the current owner of Villa Aurora. The villa has incredibly valuable art on the walls and on the ceiling. But due to conflicts in the family, the villa has been put up for auction by the Italian government. I've been out for a very old relationship that I know from New York. Zitten onder ons goedsector. Zij was vroeger real estate agent. Ze heeft een GM building verkocht aan Donald Trump. En per toeval hebben onze wegen gekruist. En heb ik, ben ik uitgenodigd door haar, maar heel raar. Ik heb nu ontdekt dat zij getrouwd is met een prins van een hele oude familie in Rome. En ik ben uitgenodigd om naar onder goed te komen kijken. En heeft ze de vraag of ik niet kan helpen met te communiceren. Misschien mogelijk voor potentieel cliënteerde. Yes, how are you? Rita, how, nice how, long, how long is it again. How long is this? It's been too long. To 20 years, 30 years? Yes, at least. De uitnodiging van de prinses die heb ik uh, van harte aanvaard. Aangaand mee bezig zijn met Villa Aurora. Maar niet zo dadelijk met uh, wat daar rond zich afspeelt. <laughs> We met in New York. Uh, yes, so long ago. Yo, You're living in one. You was open. You did real estate. Yes. And yes. now you're jumping to the most expensive property in the world, and you are a princess. I know. Isn't it strange? <laughs> wow. The marvelous. I first saw Villa Aurora when, in 2002, and I was amazed. I was just amazed at the beauty of it. So tell me, this is really special, uh, Rita. This property. Oh, this is unique. This eh? is what this unique. Is... It's not just the Caravaggio. Okay. So much. I mean, when where you entered there, the ceiling is by Zuccheri, the leading mannerist okay. painter. This is by this is considered Guercino's masterpiece, the Aurora, bringing dawn into the night. Villa Aurora gives a certain passion. As you come in, what you never ever can, you never can forget. So actually, you you are married to the prince, correct? In that yes. time, you yeah. met the, you met the person. Yes, yes. Uh, because he wanted to sell. Um, a property, or put a hotel on a property outside okay. of Rome that he owned. And we met, and we didn't do the property, but we fell in love. Oh, very sad that your husband passed away. Yeah. yeah. And that was, I saw in a new, many newspaper, that was you really, your law of your life, right? correct? Yes, he comes from the Holy Roman Empire. That is really unique, eh? He, this yes, is unique, he descends eh? from the Holy, and his real name is not a bon compagni, good friend or good companion, it's Dragon von Saxon. And when they came here in 980, and when uh, Emperor Otto II placed them in um, Spoleto, the people could not acclimate to that very Germanic name, Dragon von Saxon. So they changed it to Bon Compagni, good friend or good companion. And now you're actually alone a property and you want to start a new life. Well, I would not have auctioned this house off. Oh. So. And Rita, normally a property like this, what you talk about in general amount, how much it costs a property? I, I don't even know how to describe it. You I know people in New York that I've talked to say that when it's restored, they'll be worth over a billion. I believe you. That's but this is this you can buy, does it? No. It's not this possible. This is unique. This is a natural historic monument. But is it another three? Is it not then? You talk here about the property or you talk about art? Both. Because Both. the property is a work of art. If whomever buys it is buying a Caravaggio worth about 600 million, okay. and the house goes along with it. It's a National Historic Monument. It's a designated National Historic Monument as one of the, the cultural destinations to visit. And they filmed it, they 3D imaged it, they sent drones to, to do the exterior of the villa, and then inside they have all the layout of every room. I think it's important. So in case there are any other descendants that um, don't have that sensibility about the history, that it remain in the family. That's what I would love. Nou, de, onder, de, de properties die ik in mijn leven heb gedaan, daar, daar heb ik altijd onroerend goed verkocht. En hier is de omgekeerde wereld. Hier verkoop je kunst met onroerend goed. Ingus is meeting Elizabeth Lev. Elizabeth is an art historian specialized in Roman art. Ingus has asked her to tell him more about the artworks in Villa Aurora. It's a special place for you in your heart. What is, is uh, 
It's a special place. It should be a special, have a special place in everybody's heart. It's a little fraction of what was once an enormous property. But in the soil underneath our feet, we have 2,000 years of history. Julius wow. Caesar owned this property. He back owned in, this property. He too. owned this area and then passed on to Sallust. Then it passed on to a cardinal who, was the, who worked for wow. the Medici family. And then for 400 years, it's belonged to the Ludovisi family, whose name we see all around us. Okay. And that family, they has also something to do with the Vatican, correct? Oh, absolutely. The property was, was owned by a cardinal uh, who was named Cardinal Francesco de Maria del Monte. And that cardinal will be the reason for the Caravaggio painting upstairs. But in, 16, in the 1620s, the property was purchased by a papal family, by the Ludovisi family. The family produced Pope Gregory XV. And so Gregory XV wanted to set up his family, and they set up in this property, which at its greatest expansion was 74 acres. So gardens, statue gardens, villas, palaces, all in this incredible space are all around us. The potential client of the institution, they must have what happened with art, they must have what happened with, 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 with Italy, they must have what happened with Rome, so the passion must be there. Ines meets Ben, the legal advisor of the family. Ben tells us more about the location of the villa and the influence the state has on the sale of the villa. Ben, explain me that part, that part. How is, was where we are situated then? Okay, we're on top of the Seleucian Gardens. This is uh, like definitely uh, like one of uh, the most ancient uh, like Roman uh, venue, definitely one of the highest as well. The exactly. villa is surrounded by uh, like this amazing scenario. Please, uh, like, Let's have this uh, amazing view a lot of uh, La Fontana dell'Acqua Paola. Okay. That is uh, one of the most ancient uh, uh, fountain in Rome. Eh? Ben, this, this property, this is unique. Why the Vatican cannot buy these things? What's the reason? The uh, Vatican is so a powerful institution. Uh, the government can always buy this no, place. No, no, no. <laughs> it's up to, up to the government. And it's, for you, uh, you are an Italian, for you is that full passion? passion here? Uh, we, we are here, we are want to definitely understand what the government and the what will come up, but definitely the government has the right of first refusal. Yes. So even a private buyer will come to, for an interest to buy the villa, definitely the government can exercise and as a, an option to buy out the villa within okay. 60 days. So the, the government always the last... Absolutely, always. has the last word. We let us very quickly overtreffen door de passie door de prachtige plafondschilderijen. Maar einde van de dag, er moet betaald worden. En dat, dat cliënteel, dat gaat vrij, vrij, vrij klein zijn. Miss Beth, nou, explain me a little here. So we walk in through this, this very busy ceiling, okay. sort of the mm -hmm. exotic decoration, in a room that's kind of small and close. And then you step into this room where we have light. And we look up and we see the picture of the dawn. This painting was by an artist named Guercino. He was an artist from Bologna and he went to the most prestigious school of painting called the Karachi School. And they were very good in the Karachi School of doing these perspectives so that we're looking underneath and we're looking as if the horses are riding right above our heads. So this needs kind of a maintenance, Elizabeth. This fresco is a very strong technique, and that is the great good fortune of this fresco. Because fresco dries into colored stone, mm -hmm. the wet plaster and the pigment dry into stone, that means it will last a long time. Let me give you an example. In Pompeii, in 79 AD, Vesuvius dumped a lot of boiling ash into the city, and the frescoes are still there. But still, the building needs, if the building settles and the stone cracks, then you have a cracked fresco. Right. If people smoke in here, if there's too many exactly. odors, the dust, it'll accumulate on there. So yes, it does need maintenance, oh. it does need care. All art needs uh, care. Elizabeth, something else. This is a huge 
property. That was not only this part. The property spread all around the hill, all the way down to where today, on what is now known as the Via Veneto, mm -hmm. where we find the United States Embassy. Was it the, the, the main property, this? This? This was like a hunt, this was a hunting villa. This was actually a smaller, uh, not even really a residence, a place to sort of stop for recreation, a place to you know, uh, spend a little time in the afternoon. So this went from being, you know, just the uh, a sort of outbuilding, a pleasure building, okay. to being a residence. When you see this property, this painting, is this? unique for Rome, or are there many places like this? There are very, very few places like this, because how many people have that luxury of a building yeah. that is just to, to let your mind yeah, flower, exactly. right? Yeah. So we already have that. On top of that, maybe you could build a building like this, but would you be able to get two of the greatest artists in the history of Italy? to work here, yeah, exactly. Guercino here and Caravaggio upstairs, not to mention the many other painters who worked in here. So it is absolutely unique. Villa Aurora is, is history, is art. Zijn oude schilders is het Vaticaan, waar het onder het goed en een, een onderliggende, onderliggend leuk is. Je koopt geschiedenis. Next episode, Ines learns more about the relationship between the Vatican and the Boncompagni family. My husband's great uncle, who fought alongside Garibaldi against the Pope. Elizabeth shows Ines a one of a kind Caravaggio. There are Caravaggios in many different places, but there's only one. Caravaggio painted on a wall. Rita shows Ignis the family archive with letters from Marie Antoinette. This is uh, uh, from, the, from the family or what is it? Yeah, this is 155, 50,000 documents. So it's kind of fascinating to see letters from Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI.